Welcome to another Walter Football video. I'm Charlie Campbell, Senior Draft Analyst. Before we get rolling here, I suggest you click into the settings, speed it up to 1.25 or 1.5. Also, I'm going to, uh, if you check the comments below, I'm going to post an outline of the mock so you can follow along there, or you can click the link below, follow along uh, on the web page on Walter Football, and you can see stats for the players, their measurements, all those kinds of things. Uh, that are included in the in the mock each week. Also wanted to say sorry I wasn't with you guys last week. I was without power and running water for about four days after Hurricane Ian. We had some damage done to the house, so it's just kind of getting everything uh, back to normal after that. But anyways, we're back, and here's this week's mock. So first overall, I have the Texans taking Bryce Young, quarterback from Alabama. Obviously, the Texans need a future franchise quarterback. Young could definitely be that for them. We'll see if his shoulder strain becomes more of an issue, but even if uh, it be, requires more invasive treatment, whether it became like, you know, it, they released that it was a torn rotator cuff or something like that. I don't think that's going to keep Young from going high in the first round. Sam Bradford had a serious shoulder injury uh, from his final season in Oklahoma. He went first overall to the Rams. We saw Tua a couple years ago with the hip injury that really scared some NFL teams uh, still go high in the first round. So I don't think uh, this shoulder injury is going to cause a slide for Bryce Young. Second overall, I have the Panthers taking care of uh, C.J. Stroud, quarterback from Ohio State. Obviously, Baker Mayfield has not played well for Carolina. Sam Darnold isn't the answer. They need a future franchise quarterback there. Third overall, I have the Raiders taking Will Anderson, edge rusher from Alabama. He's just the best player available. Edge rusher isn't the hugest need on the Raiders roster, but Chandler Jones has been a big disappointment thus far. Not surprising considering he's past 30 uh, and on the decline, so I didn't like that signing at the time. But looking at his contract, they could get out of it after two years. So you could have a season with Will Anderson and Jones and Max Crosby rotating, uh, and then you cut Chandler Jones after that season and you're set with Anderson and Crosby in the long term as your lead edge rushers. Fourth overall, I have the Eagles taking Jalen Carter, defensive tackle from Georgia, reuniting him with Jordan Davis. You got Davis as the big heavy nose tackle. You can put uh, Carter in as a three technique give them interior rush and push with those two guys uh, just taking the best player available and of course uh, Philadelphia always always has prioritized offensive and defensive line draft picks fifth overall I have the Steelers taking Jalen Duncan left tackle from Maryland give them a left tackle natural left tackle to help protect Kenny Pickett and open holes for Najee Harris Sixth overall, I have the Patriots taking Jackson Smith and the Jigba wide receiver from Ohio State. Give them a playmaker, a number one receiver that they badly need for Mac Jones. The Patriots roster, while they play tough and they're disciplined football team and they have uh, some quality players, they really need some elite talent and game changers on both sides of the ball, uh, and especially in the passing game to give uh, Mac Jones something he can work with. So. Six overall, I have the uh, Washington Commanders, <laughs> still, still weird to me, uh, taking Will Levis, quarterback from Kentucky, uh, give them that future franchise quarterback. Carson Wentz, I don't think, is the answer. I think we'll see that more and more as the season progresses, and they'll need a replacement. Will Levis, big arm, tough, has mobility. Uh, natural passer just has to cut down on the ball security issues interceptions fumbles holds the ball too long and that can lead to some problems but he has big time ability uh, and definitely uh, has will enter the NFL and have one of the stronger arms in the league eighth overall I have Detroit taking Joey Porter Jr. cornerback from Penn State Detroit's defense has been terrible this season 
uh, they need help in the secondary. Jeff Okuda's finally come around and playing well, uh, but Amani Aruye has just been awful. Uh, been getting torched this season. He's going to be a free agent anyway. Uh, so they need a cornerback upgrade badly across from Okuda and Porter would definitely be that. Ninth overall, I have the Colts taking Miles Murphy, edge rusher uh, from Clemson. As you can see from the uh, links below in the hot press, we have one going up here uh, on Miles Murphy and how teams really are over just ex exuberant about his skill set and the upside he has in terms of size. Uh, speed, athleticism, just freaky ability to dominate, uh, just kind of needs to get more motivation, get, get a little bit more uh, hyped up for dominating games like he can and not toying with offensive tackles. Really interesting quotes I got on him uh, from some sources, so you can check that link below. But the Colts need more edge rush. Yannick Ngakwe is, might not be a long-term player, Quiddy Pay, uh, I think, will turn into a solid pro for them. Has had a, now had an injury, so that could slow him down some. But definitely, I think you're going to see uh, pass rush, offensive tackle, uh, those positions being critical considerations for the Colts here uh, in the in the 2023 draft. Tenth overall, I have the Falcons taking Jared Verse, defensive end from Florida State. They could use an edge rusher to go with Arnold Ebiketti, uh, really need to improve that pass rush there in Atlanta and versus really playing phenomenal football this season. 11th overall, I have the Texans taking Gervin Dexter Sr., defensive tackle from Florida. A little high for him, but the Texans badly need interior defensive line talent to help stop the run. Dexter has upside, really moves well for a really big defensive lineman, so the upside is there for him to become a better pass rusher. And if he finishes the season strong in terms of rushing the passer, he could really skyrocket because teams love what he does in the ground game and they like his skill set. Twelfth overall, I have the Seahawks taking Antonio Johnson, cornerback slate safety from Texas A&M. Seattle needs to, uh, cornerback safety upgrades. We've seen that uh, consistently, and you just saw uh, against Detroit with TJ Hawkinson having a huge game. Antonio Johnson would really help with that. He'd help them in the division in terms of uh, having an interior defender that can help cover, whether it's guys like Kittle or helping with Cup uh, when they play the Rams. He'd just make a lot of sense for Seattle. 13th overall, I have the Seahawks taking Felix Anaduke Uusma, edge rusher from Kansas State. They could use more pass rush. He'd be a plug-and-play uh, contributor for them. 14th overall, I have the Chargers taking Zion Nelson, left tackle from Miami. I think you could put him on the right side in that to go with Rashawn Slater on the left, and now you have some bookend tackles uh, to protect Justin Herbert. 15th overall, I have the Cardinals taking Brian Branch, cornerback slash safety from Alabama. He plays the kind of Minka Fitzpatrick star defender um, position uh, that, that Alabama has just had a lot of excellent players come through and handle that position well and turn into good pros. Uh, and Brian Branch is just perfect for that. He's got size, athleticism, uh, can cover as a nickel, could play safety as well, could be a really excellent safety. He and Antonio Johnson are both kind of similar players in that regard, so I think he'd be a real nice upgrade there for Arizona. They could use more secondary talent. 16th overall of the Lions taking K.J. Jefferson, quarterback from Arkansas, give Detroit a future franchise quarterback, Potentially, Jefferson has a good skill set, is a tough runner, uh, has a good arm, has size, can be accurate, needs to improve the field vision in terms of reading defenses, working through his progression, uh, but the talent is there. They could keep him for one season on the bench behind Jared Goff, or they could look to deal Goff, or they could just cut Goff without penalty after this season. Uh, but Goff is playing well enough, I think they could get a nice trade for him. Uh, and then have a future franchise quarterback to build around. I think Goff, while he's a solid pro, he's not a championship pro, and I think that Detroit is going to look 
uh, for an upgrade here. 17th overall, I have the Jets taking Peter Skaronsky, left tackle from Northwestern. He also has the size and flexibility where you could kick him inside to guard. So I like this pick for the Jets because it helps them if Makai Becton is slow to come back from his injuries or just kind of flakes out on them, doesn't pan out. Now you have a starting tackle. If Becton uh, does come around and is looking good and playing well, well now you have another upgrade on the inside and you're really building up an awesome line in front of Zach Wilson and Brees Hall there in New York. 18th overall, I have the Bears taking Jordan Addison, wide receiver from USC. Chicago badly needs playmakers. They have got to get some more talent uh, at receiver for Justin Fields. It's just criminal uh, what they've given him to work with in terms of that offensive line and the receivers they field. So they have to get some playmakers. Fields is a dangerous deep ball thrower. Addison uh, can hurt teams vertically, so I like that fit for Chicago. 19th overall, I have the Ravens taking Quinton Johnston, wide receiver from TCU. Big, fast, athletic. I think he'd be a nice uh, receiver to pair with, pair with Rashad Bateman and give Lamar Jackson uh, two mismatch guys there. 20th overall, I have the Dolphins taking B. John Robinson, running back from Texas. I love this pick for Miami. I think with the, the receiving talent that Miami has and the speed they have with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, if you put a stud running back in that offense, they're just going to be so hard uh, to keep on the sideline and keep them from getting first downs and racking up points because how are teams going to deploy their safeties? If you bring up the safeties to stop a stud running back like Robinson, well, now you're vulnerable deep for Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. You keep your safeties back. Now those are great run fronts to attack them with a beast like Robinson. So I love this pick for Miami. 21st overall, I have the Bucks taking Dante Demas, wide receiver from Maryland. Big, fast, athletic. Has kind of yet to break out this year coming off an injury. Uh, in 2021, but he was killing it last year, uh, just lighting up the Big Ten. Check out his highlight plays. They're just awesome. So he has got a lot of talent and upside. Let's see if he breaks out here in the second half of this year and could be a riser through the process with, you know, big workout numbers. 22nd overall, I have Cincinnati taking Jarrett Patterson center from Notre Dame. He could also play guard. Just gives the Bengals a versatile piece up on the inside there to help them improve that offensive line. 23rd overall, I have the Titans taking Isaiah Foskey, defensive end from Notre Dame. Obviously, Harold Landry will be coming back off an injury. Bud Dupree's been a pretty big disappointment at this point in Tennessee. They could take Foskey, even if Dupree comes along and Landry's looking good coming off the injury. You could take Foskey, rotate them, uh, and then when they need to get cheaper and let go of one of the vets, you have a, a young, cheap talent to replace them. 24th overall, I have the Giants taking Jalen Jones, cornerback from Texas A&M. He's big, fast, athletic, can really run the route, prevent separation. He's tough. He'll tackle. I think he could be a riser leading up to the draft. Uh, and the Giants could use cornerback to replace James Bradbury. Jones has cornerback one potential. 25th overall are the Jaguars taking Cedric Tillman, wide receiver from Tennessee. Give them a big play receiver uh, to go with Christian Kirk. They could use a big outside receiver, kind of a true number one for Trevor Lawrence, and Tillman might have that ability. 26th overall, I have the Bills taking Kayshawn Boutte, wide receiver from LSU. Give Buffalo another weapon for Josh Allen. They have such a good roster, they can take best player available. But as Stephon Diggs ages, I think it would make sense to have some good depth at receiver. Uh, and Gabe, with him and Gabe Davis and Boutte, now you have a really dangerous trio. And if you have an injury to one of those top two guys, your passing attack won't fall apart. So uh, I like that pick for the Bills in terms of depth, short-term and rotational talent immediately and long-term potential payoff. 27th overall, I have the Cowboys taking Tyree Wilson, edge rusher from Texas Tech. He's big 
dangerous pass rusher, has some toughness against the run, could be a really nice addition there for Dallas as a replacement for Randy Gregory and going across uh, from Micah Parsons. 28th overall, I have the Packers taking Anton Harrison, left tackle from Oklahoma. They could put him at guard or right tackle, just continue to improve that offensive line in front of Aaron Rodgers. <clears throat> 29th overall, I have the Chiefs taking Brian Brise, defensive tackle from Clemson. He's a tough run defender, still needs to improve the pass rush, but I think he could be a really nice player to pair with Chris Jones on the inside uh, and continue to build up nice young talent on that defensive line to go with George Karloftis. 30th overall, I have the Vikings taking Clark Phillips, cornerback from Utah. Give Minnesota a nice cover corner uh, that can run the route and prevent separation. Will help them within the division with guys like Amonra St. Brown, Romeo Dobbs. Uh, give them a, a guy to go with Andrew Booth. Obviously, Patrick Peterson's not going to play forever. Uh, so I think cornerback is a position that could make sense for Minnesota still. 31st overall, I have the Eagles taking Will McDonald, edge rusher from Iowa State. Dangerous quarterback hunter, so natural uh, getting after the quarterback, really fast, uh, athletic. Has to get tougher against the run, uh, but I think that with Philadelphia and the depth they have up front, they can develop. McDonald as a run defender, use him as a DPR, designated pass rusher, uh, as he develops and will help them uh, in third down and, and <clears throat> in the nickel set. All right, let's get into teams that don't have first-round picks. 34th overall, I have the Saints taking Josh Proctor, safety from Ohio State. Obviously, Tyron Matthew is probably not a long-term player at this stage of his career, so Proctor could come in, give them some depth, and become an eventual starter. 41st overall, I have the Browns taking Habuk Baldonado, defensive end from Pitt. Uh, Jadavian Clowney's been signed to another one-year contract two years in a row, but he's going to hit free agency again. Eventually, the Browns will probably look to get younger and cheaper across from Miles Garrett. 46th overall, I have the Rams taking B.J. Ojolari, a rusher from LSU. Give them a replacement from Von Miller, uh, a guy to go across from Leonard Floyd and help the edge rush and help uh, let Aaron Donald uh, get rested and not have to burn him out and try and keep him healthy and keep him ready for the postseason by rotating your guys that you can get after the quarterback. 50th overall, I have the 49ers taking Brandon Joseph safety at Notre Dame. Safety's been a position San Francisco could use some help at for the past few years, so I think that would make sense for them. And then in the third round, I'll do a pick for Denver. Uh, and for them, I have them taking Brenton Cox, edge rusher from Florida. Bradley Chubb, we'll see if he gets re-signed. Even if he does, it wouldn't hurt to have a third guy to rotate with him and Randy Gregory. Give them some depth. Cox is strong, has good length, has improved his pass rush. I think he'd be a nice fit there for Denver. So that's this week's mock. I really appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you so much. Thanks for reading Walter Football. We got lots of great content, of course, going up every day. <clears throat> Walt is absolutely killing it with his picks this year, bringing in tons of money. I think he's up to around seven grand or something winnings uh, thus far. So you got to check out his weekly picks. And of course, our mocks get updated weekly in position rankings and all kinds of other stuff. So uh, just check out WalterFootball.com. But thank you guys again so much for watching. Really appreciate you. Please like and subscribe and share and all that stuff. But uh, take care. I'll be back with you soon. Love to all of you. Be safe.